Howdy folks, this is a short little preview of what I've been working on with the Pip-Boy. Um, I showed a boot screen a while back that was written in CircuitPython. And uh, now I'm actually switching over to full-fledged Python and using Pygame. Uh, so what I've done is I've forked the, uh, the PYP-Boy, Pip-Boy code that is on GitHub that's been forked 47 other times. And I'm trying to dig through that and update it so that it fits the Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV because it was originally written for the Pip-Boy uh, 3000 from Fallout uh, 3. Um, so I've gotten a few little things working here. There's going to be bugs. This is just the very first screen that I've really got up. Uh, so I can switch at least between the different menus here. And I've switched the, uh, the highlight functionality compared to the original code. I want to actually add the animations and get this all properly sized, of course. Um, and then I'm trying to work right now on the top menu, which right now just disappears. Uh, this uh, code has a map system, which I don't have working right this second because I don't have a cache map. Um, and then it also has a radio functionality, although I have it turned off right now. Uh, so what I've been working on is getting is basically teaching myself Python while trying to dig through this code, which has been touched by lots of people. So uh, there's lots of different methods that were used in here for different aspects of the code that I'm trying to kind of piece back together. Um, if anybody's already messed with this code, I'd love to talk to them on Discord or something and actually uh, and actually go through this stuff live. Uh, so what I've managed to do is, get, of course, get the stat screen here working. Uh, next thing I'll probably work on is trying to get the boot screen working. Um, and then I've gotten the updated the scan line effects so they match closer to Fallout 4. Uh, this little flickering effect you're seeing is, is visible in person, but it's, it's more subtle. It looks like an old school CRT display. Uh, that's actually a, an interference pattern effect going on between the two different overlays that are running at the same time. Um, so I've already hit the limitation, obviously, of the RP2040 that was running CircuitPython. Um, and then I was running the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is able to render this, at a, but it's a much slower frame rate. That scan line is jumpy as it jumps as it goes across the screen. So now I'm up to a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 compute module, uh, which is running over here. And that's going to, uh, it runs a little hotter than I'd like. So it's probably going to mean that the uh, Pip-Boy is going to have to run off an external battery pack if you want to run it for anything more than, say, an hour. But this is probably just going to sit on a stand anyways for the most part. Uh, but this is just kind of the beginning. Uh, what's on here with the stat screen, this isn't a just displaying a picture. Everything on this stat screen right now is fully rendered with lines and fonts and, and individual pictures. Uh, i got to animate the, uh, the guy, of course, and that's maybe one of the, one of the next, other next things I'm going to work on. Uh, so the idea here, since it's all rendered live, I can go and change all these variables uh, on the fly. Um, and where most of the GUIs I've seen out there just are really just displaying pictures. And they're just fancy slideshows, and I don't want that. Uh, so if you want to check out this project, it, the link is in the description below. It's on the Replica Prop Forum. I've been working on this for f uh, five years going now. Uh, on and off. But... Uh, now uh, it's exciting to have a display. This display is the Hyperpixel 4.0 square. Uh, really hard to find because they uh, kind of come in batches and if you don't have the, uh, don't get them right away, they're already gone. Um, I think some of the touch ones are available, but I needed the non-touch version because this is actually behind, uh, let me move the uh, jig here. This is actually gonna sit behind a piece of green acrylic and that, both enhances the contrast and adds the kind of green background effect that makes this look more like an old CRT. Uh, it's actually kind of, it's hard to show on camera, but in, in real life, it's kind of striking. It goes from looking like an electronic display to looking like a, uh, an, an old school display. And then this wood frame is the, is the outline, and it's what I'm actually going to use to heat bend this acrylic uh, sometime. All right, so thanks for watching.